here and work, all our research. Um, so then after that, a phase started of, okay, what do we, what do we want to do with this facility? So talking with the faculty, you know, what do you need? And one of the first things that was identified was a flowing seawater lab where they could keep animals alive long-term um, and stable, dependable. They didn't want me to be calling them up at one in the morning and telling them, sorry, all your animals died, start over. You know, that's just not gonna work. They won't get that funding again. And, and it can be sometimes years of research just gone. So we had to design a system that was super stable and that would keep animals uh, uh, alive for the duration of the, of the work. So that was our first big project. It involved a lot of permitting. Um, it was really uh, fairly overwhelming for me, you know, coming from a, a science background to then go basically into construction management. But uh, I jumped in. I knew, I knew what a marine lab should be, but then how to, how to communicate that to the to the designers and then to even work with um, the, uh, the contractors to, to make that happen was all a, a big learning curve for me. But I found it really exciting, it was really interesting. Um, and uh, and $1.7 million later and about 15 different permits later, uh, we, we built this. Um, so uh, it's been a great, a great asset. Um, so in addition to the seawater system, the other needs were boating. Uh, we own four different boats. Two of them are here. Uh, that's the, the, the Radden over there. The green and white one is our largest one at 26 feet. It's been a wonderful boat. We can get out diving on it. We can deploy instruments. Um, this other uh, flat bottom one actually came with the pier. And the purpose of that boat was to pull the oil boom around the tanker. The oil tankers that were loading and unloading oil here, that was the original purpose of the pier. Um, so that boat came with the pier, which is nice. And then we, uh, we have a 19-foot Zodiac um, that uh, is off-site right now. And then we have a little 13-foot uh, Boston Whaler that stays up in Morro Bay. There's a, a number of our faculty do work in Morro Bay and having a boat in the harbor there is convenient. So check, got, got seawater system, got boats, we're good. What's, what's next? Um, diving. So I um, was able to hire Jason Felton, who we probably meet here. Um, he's our diving safety officer and uh, he started up our scientific diving program. So students that need that work, that capacity, that ability, that uh, checkbox, that tool in their toolbox to, to do uh, underwater work, um, there's a scientific diving uh, uh, um, training that you go through and, uh, and then you're able to dive for the university. Um, and the nice thing about that, it's, it's, a, it's a program recognized virtually worldwide so you can go and dive for other other institutions, uh, even private consulting firms are using it um, all over the place. So, um, so we're up to speed on that. So those are that's our three big things that we we do: um, the seawater system, working here, and then getting out in the field with the with the boating and diving. And then the fourth uh, um, kind of a, a side thing that we all get involved with time to time is what we call our fee for service work, where companies are very interested. Uh, in coming here and being able to test instrumentation that they're developing in a stable, controlled, private um, environment. We have tons of power from the industrial uh, history um, of how we got started out here. Um, so here, yeah, we can deploy things over the side. These are all the oyster uh, grow outs over here. Um, there's oysters in those bags, in those uh, baskets growing there. So they grow them up to a certain size and then move them up to Morro Bay. And that's our hand crank system we put in so we can crank those bags back and forth. And uh, this is our dive ladder. We can lower this puppy down and, and get in the water right here very conveniently. Uh, with the crane up there, we can launch um, our two smaller boats here. We can't launch the big one. It's not quite heavy enough. Um, we've got another thing to take on the side. Yeah, so... Uh, the water from the pump down below will come up into one of these two tanks. So right now this side is running. Um, so there's a thousand gallons of seawater in here. And then since that one pump can't pump everything all the way through, um, we have another pump here uh, drawing water out of this tank and up into this piping. And then the water, most of it, will go through these sand filters. These are big. Uh, sand filters that are um, 
filtering out most of the sediment and most of the plankton. Um, so if you want to, you know, have a, uh, you don't want a lot of extra food, say from phytoplankton or animal plankton going into your tanks, then uh, the filtered water is what you want to use. Also, you have much less cleaning to do, you know, if, if you're not pumping a lot of sediment and plankton into your tank. But there's a bypass up here, above here that will send raw water into the other room. In, um, uh, if you're raising oysters or clams, scallops, anything that's filtering seawater, you have your food, then they can feed the seawater directly into that. Run it through these extra filters, and then it goes through these uh, UV sterilizers. Um, and those will even kill, like, they want to actually kill any viruses in there. The, you know, the phytoplankton, most of the phytoplankton is being removed by the sand and by these filters, but then anything smaller than, than a phytoplankton, viruses and stuff, bacteria will get killed by the UV. Um, yeah, so that's, that's uh, additional filtration just on these. These tanks here with the oysters. And here's some of them that are growing. So these ones here would be kind of like the probably the brood stock. You know, these are the adult sizes that are making the, the babies. Um, and then, yeah, here's some smaller ones growing. So then they get them growing on these plates here. They get them growing on these plates, and then they'll. Uh, grow up to you know larger sizes, and then they'll move them out to the bags and, uh, and grow up from there. These would be really good on the market to write about now. So, <laughs> and then uh, yeah, these are all purple sea urchins. <laughs>